This was amazing. This was my favorite thing that I've done so far in Betagol. There's mud everywhere. Worth it. Worth it. Welcome to another day in Bali. We're here in the north in the Highlands area in a town called Betagol. We are spending a few days in this area exploring all of the top attractions. We are seeking to answer the question, should you just day trip to this area or should you spend more time here? We are gonna see the Uludano Baritan Tempo. We're gonna see the Bali Botanic Gardens, the Blooms Garden, the traditional market. So we have a lot in store for this video. So hold on, let's get started. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, okay. Yeah, little one, no seed. Yes, I don't think that. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It's like candy. Yeah. What is that? This is the snow fruit. She said that we have snow and she has fruit. <laughs> I've never heard of this or seen it. it smells slightly sweet. <laughs> mm. What does it taste like? Snow? <laughs> <laughs> it's fluffy like snow. Like marshmallow. Marshmallow. Yeah. Ah. That was really different. Yeah. That's cool. Here it goes. Snow fruit. Don't eat the seed. Mm. Like a marshmallow. Yeah, somewhere between marshmallow and cotton candy. And one? The taste tests have worked. <laughs> Well, that market was quite the experience. <laughs> Everybody wanted our attention because there's so few tourists here. Yeah. But the stall that we stopped at was amazing. She just kept she just kept shoving new fruit at us to try, things we've never seen or heard of before. And it worked very well. 85, 90, one, 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 90 only for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one free, okay, only for uh, you. Because we are now carrying around like four pounds of fruit for the rest of the day. <laughs> it's funny how that is the uh, traditional market. It lines the street and it goes back even further. And if you want to try a lot of the local fruits, things you haven't ever seen before, definitely stop here. We heard some thunder, so we are on the move so we can explore the park before possibly it rains. This botanic garden is huge. It's actually the biggest one in the entire country and covers 147 hectares. They have the largest begonia collection in the entire world. They have the largest orchid collection in at least all of Bali. So we couldn't miss, we couldn't miss such a garden that's like the biggest and best of everything. So here we are. First stop is gonna be the Begonia House. Oh no, the doors are shut. Crap. <laughs> we'll go around the corner and check that out. I feel like I have said this like a million times this trip, but this looks like something out of Jurassic Park. I'll give us a copyright strike. <laughs> this is Jurassic Park. Total Jurassic Park vibes. See the windows falling off? I'm telling you, there is a T-Rex loose somewhere in Bali. Right here. <laughs> Look at that, this is closed. This is such a neat building. This is the inside of the building that we can't get into. Our disappointment turned to absolute delight when a gardener motioned for us to follow him. A shortcut. <laughs> And here's what it looks like from inside the doors. <laughs> this is like the best kind of luck.
Well, that was, <laughs> that was amazing. The gardener was really friendly. <laughs> Oh, we got to get out. He spoke no English, but I asked him about the begonias, and he knew the word begonia. And the next thing we knew, we got this like behind-the-scenes walk <laughs> on the way to the begonia conservatory, which is closed to the public right now. So we know that we were extremely fortunate to have been able to see that. That was really cool, and to be the the only ones there was really special. And also, he had a scythe. <laughs> They all do. They all walk around with them. It's so unsettling, but it's so normal. <laughs> we found this amazing pergola with, I don't know what these flowers are, but they are so cool looking. Some kind of orchid, I think. We don't know. <sighs> oh, I'm getting tripped on. <laughs> I think we found the bamboo forest. Kind of an elaborate entry scheme here. All right, to show you how massive these bamboo bundles are, Bill's heading over there. He is six foot one, so you can imagine how just giant these are in person. Contrary to popular belief, bamboo is actually not a tree. It's a type of grass, a giant freaking grass, but a grass. Also, did you know that there are 60 to 70 types of bamboo that are native only to Indonesia? This one is a Giganticoa pubinervus wijaya from Sumatera. That was easy for you to say. This one here is a Schizostachium brachycladum kurtz, I think. We're experts. Mm. And even though it is raining out, because the bamboo is so thick, we are actually not getting rain on it at all. And now it's raining harder. It's so cool to see the different sizes of bamboo. There's little tiny baby ones, baby bamboo. There's huge, massive, thick bamboo stalks, grasses, trees. <laughs> oh, it's really pretty. It's just silent, except for two annoying people who are making YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Never would have expected to find this here. Okay, we are doing a little bit of an ice cream break in the rain, but there's a great view. And uh, I got this. Hula hula. It's green. This could be durian, it could be pistachio, it could be mint. I'm hoping for pistachio or mint. It could be, what are, lime? It's chocolate covered though. <laughs> Is it good? Or I don't is it... know what it is. It's green. It's whatever Kachang Hijau is. All right, Bill has looked up what this flavor is. And apparently it's mung bean. Is that like a bean sprout? A mung bean. I don't know, it's a tasty little tree. It's not what I was expecting. <laughs> uh, he, in the meantime, has chosen something equally exotic. Um, I think it's Oreo flavored. <laughs> no it pretty much tastes like Oreos. <laughs> Apparently they close in 15 minutes, we think. According to the Google, we might not get to see the orchids because we sat down to have ice cream. Oops. No time today. All right, we really hoofed it. And I think we made it to the orchids. The gates are still open. It's five minutes to four. Apparently it's the building that's off in the background. Oh, I hope the doors are still open. Well, it looks really pretty, but we're not able to get in and I don't see any friendly gardeners looming about. It's 4 p.m., we don't know what happens. Are they gonna come along and collect us? Actually, a golf cart ride would be pretty nice. We're a long ways from the front. taking us a really long time to leave. <laughs> There's just beautiful flowers here. And statues. And nobody has kicked us out yet. So 
you know, we're sort of taking our time leaving, I guess. Maybe it's only the buildings that close at 4 p.m. and maybe you can just take your time if you are on your feet, which we have been. There's actually a couple other ways you can get around the park. We've done it on foot today, uh, which honestly was a pretty long walk. It took us all afternoon pretty much. Uh, they also have e-bikes and they have electric scooters you can rent and they have regular bicycles you can rent uh, and they're pretty reasonable prices. We debated doing the e-bikes but... So this time we chose to walk it and honestly we probably should have biked it because there was just so much to see. The area that we're in is known for growing strawberries which is amazing because Minnesota where we're from is also amazing for strawberries. They're everywhere. So when I say you can't miss them, I mean like literally you can't miss them. There are women walking up and down the street trying to get you to buy them. And there are shops that specialize in strawberries. So here we have some strawberries with sugar, strawberry juice, and a strawberry milkshake. Strawberry juice is something that we had not tried until this trip and I'm not sure how I'm gonna be able to go home and not have it again. It is so delicious. It just tastes like perfectly ripe strawberries. Ah. Oh. Except you get to drink it. Like, well, that's really good. It's amazing. It's so good. So if you come to Vedigal, don't miss any of the strawberries. Absolutely a treat. Well, it is the next morning and our hotel is staying right across from one of the most visited attractions in Vedigal. So we are starting our morning without any breakfast. We just hopped across the road. It's before 7.30 and we are visiting an incredible temple. We are entering the gate and leaving our negative energy behind. So we are ready to receive positive energy. staying right across from the temple. We've been watching people coming and going from here at all hours of the day. And an advantage to staying in Bedagul versus doing it as a day trip is that you get to get to the temple first thing in the morning when it opens. And this is blissfully people free. I count one, two, four other visitors besides us right now. It's not 8 a.m. yet. Uh, this is a huge reason to stay in Bedagul. If you do come here, there are lots of tourist services. There are toilets, uh, there's a restaurant, there is a wife walking across your shot, <laughs> and there's also what looks like a mini golf course, but it's really, I think, just a area for kids to play. Boy, you have to give Bali credit. If there is an opportunity for creating an Instagrammable thing, <laughs> they take full advantage of it. I made a new friend. <laughs> All right, so this is Instagram Central. Uh, we have the swans. There's Bill and his sarong. We have all the stuff in the background for the kids to play on. We have some uh, pyramids, I guess. And everything, of course, has the name prominently displayed. I mean, and nobody's here first thing in the morning. So you have all of the spots to yourself. So is maybe open? Maybe I won't go very far. <laughs> oh, totally stable. I got this. Oh God, super slippery. <laughs> That's maybe as far as I go. <laughs> I'm not ready for a bath. <laughs> Do kids cry when they fall in? because surely the kids will fall in. <laughs> I made it. We admit that we thought that this was to put children into. <laughs> it's not, it's garbage. <laughs> so you can climb on the garbage cans, just don't put your kids in them. <laughs> It's 
it's around nine o'clock now and we still more or less have the place to ourselves. It takes an hour, hour and a half to get here from Ubud, which is where people commonly day trip from. Have you ever seen a strawberry so excited about an exit in the toilet? The answer is no. No, you have not. And this is where we're headed after we eat breakfast. Well, we are at another one of Bedigal's top attractions. This one looks a little bit interesting and different. It's called the Blooms Garden, and it looks like a lot of fun. They have lots of places where you can take photos. That's a great view. Up, up, up in a painted cup, I will pour my love from a cloud above. So bright I can see the lights taking you up and above the blue sky. Tastes good to be drinking all of honey sweet brew of ours. Up, up in a painted cup, right in the sky like a firefly. Like a firefly. I believe to believe is to feel the fire grow. We think it's pretty hysterical <laughs> that the Marina Bay Sands is here, but I guess at the same time, why not take one of the world's most iconic places that's not even that far from Indonesia and put it in a park? It's the view from the top of the Marina Bay Sands, just not the one in Singapore. Up, up in a painted cup, right in the sky like a firefly. Mm, like a firefly. Made it. Looks like we're getting that drink at the top of Marina Bay Sands after all. Now we can say that we've been to the top. Oh, it's so funny, but also kind of ingenious. I believe to believe is to see how the present comes from dreams. Color in my life. nuts. I don't know how much Bill was able to record. <laughs> I thought it would be like this tame, easy ride on the concrete around the park and we were, flowers. <laughs> we're looking at the flowers, but uh, wow, we went through mud, we went up hills, we went down hills. I was completely unprepared for how much mud there was. <laughs> These were a lot less muddy before we went. And it looks like the guys have fun making the course. I, there were a bunch of areas that were dug out and with uh, little bumps and jump, not jumps. I mean, we didn't, we didn't get air. So we nearly got, well, one of us did get stuck. I did get stuck in a mud puddle once. Uh, I had to back up and um, the wheels were spinning and that's all she had. Uh, so anyway, I had to, <laughs> had to redo that. This was amazing. This was my favorite thing that I've done so far in Bedigal, actually, I have to say. It was incredible. I have mud everywhere. I got mud on my purse. I got mud on my butt. We'll just leave that one. Yeah, we, yeah. We'll just leave that one for <laughs> I did change into pants out of my dress, thank God. <laughs> There's mud everywhere. Worth it. Worth it. I had the weirdest experience at the park today. We've heard of people being stopped for photos when they visit Asian countries and they're from America or from Europe. I am not tall. And two kind of giggling girls came and they approached me and one of them held out the phone and said, photo? And I thought they wanted me to take their picture. I said, sure. And she turned around and handed the phone to her friend who proceeded to take a bunch of pictures of 
the one girl and I, and then they swapped places, and then they just kept taking photos, and then they saw Bill, and then we had to repeat the process and take him with both of us. I have no idea what went on. I did not expect that to happen to us. Uh, it was weird. It was fine, but it though. it was fun. Yeah. I, I laughed so much at this garden. It was just a, a day full of strange experiences that were a lot of fun. Just an afternoon filled with laughter. We needed it. We set out in this video to figure out should you come to Betagol and should it be a day trip or should you stay here? And the answer is... It depends. <laughs> if you're looking for a vacation from your vacation and you want to be somewhere that's a little bit cooler and a lot less hectic, this is a great place to base yourself for a few days. That being said, there are two things that you need to be aware of. First, there aren't very many functioning cash machines. Bring cash with you. Second, there also aren't very many cab drivers. We haven't been able to find a Grab, a Gojek, or even a taxi while we're here. We've relied on private drivers and the kindness of our hotel staff. So those are the two things that you need to know about should you come and stay in the Bedigola region and enjoy the cool weather here just like we have. Also, when I would get too close to Heather and she'd hit the gas, mud would come flying at me. <laughs> I didn't know that, but I did wonder about it. So that was fun. <laughs> I gassed a little extra sometimes. <laughs>